First Hi, of all, baby. <laughs> how are it's you? It's so good to see you. Well, I can't tell you how excited I am for you. You know, I, I, I shot a couple Instagram things that I'll air later to kind of promote this. You know, I could have predicted you on a reality show years ago. Come on. No, you could have not. <laughs> yes, you could. This, so, so I don't know how much time we have. I won't take up a ton of your oh, time. Oh, we have no, we have we have half an hour. Okay. At least. So okay, I push good. everything back. Okay, good. Um, let's start from the very beginning. First of all, how are you doing? Because as touchy and feely and gregarious as you are, I can't imagine what this whole COVID pandemic has been like for you because you have to distance yourself and you are the opposite. When you meet you for the first time, you're all over. You're just nothing but hugs and, and intimacy. It's, it's very true. Uh, you, you know, it, it has not been easy. Uh, it's definitely testing me. Um, but you know, it's it's an interesting time. I think I think it's, it's at least for me, it's like a it, it's a way for me to kind of go back to what really matters in life. And I think also for a lot of other people, it's kind of going back to uh, you know the simple little things, the right that bring us pleasure and kind of let go of the whole fancy glitzy thing that you know we we somehow get hooked up on and we forget like you know what life is about. This is really a a, a reality check, kind of going back to. You know, spending time with the people we love and doing things that we love. And, um, you know, they don't have to be perfect. They don't have to be big. They don't have to be glamorous. They just have to speak to our soul. And I think that's kind of where we're going. You know, and I'll get to that because that's really what this whole show is about. Every single wedding you guys handle, it's all about the details and it's all about the individuals who are getting married. I'll get to that in a second. Rewind. Yeah. Now, I've known you for many years. I don't know if you signed a non-disclosure agreement, but I don't remember hearing anything about this reality show. So how, <laughs> how did this come about? Um, well, like anything in life, it comes when you least expect it, right? So you kind of let go of things, and then all of a sudden they show up in your life. Tara, you, you, you know, I had the chance of doing some uh, TV before, and there were opportunities um, <clears throat> for other type of shows uh, in my past. And I've always passed on these opportunities because I always felt that they weren't the right, uh, the right fit for me and for what I, I stand for in life and, and who I am. And then um, Sia Du came and, you know, the, the fantastic producers uh, of Scout, um, you know, the same guys of Queer Eye, uh, they kind of um, entered my life and uh, this show uh, just fell on my lap and it felt so right. It felt so good. Uh, because, you know, it's not a show about me. It's not a show about Jeremiah. It's not a show about Ty. It's really about the stories of the couples and what they go through and what love means not only in their lives, but also in ours and, you know, how we should embrace it more and trust it more and really kind of, um, you know, uh, pass the fears and the failures and the struggles and, and really realize that love is there to sustain us all. And I think that's, that's a beautiful message, especially nowadays with everything that we're going through. Did you know about this show when we were in Italy together? Did you know about this thing? Because <laughs> I was I trying not. to do the timing. I'm like, did he know about this? And somehow I couldn't get it out of him. All right. I didn't know, but listen, I, I'm not good at keeping secrets, but I, I, really, yeah. I really had to keep my lips tight for a year. Yeah. So that, that's it. Well, you know, I love these two other guys that you're with, and I know that you didn't really know them beforehand. You just yeah. talked about the fact that it's really not a show about you guys per se. It's more about the couple. So you get three guys all kind of fighting for airtime with their own specialties. And again, I know it's not about you guys, but has it been fun to kind of check out, you know, who's trending well with the public? Who, who are people responding to? Who's, have you guys caught, <laughs> gotten caught up in that? You know what I'm talking about. Yeah, I, I, I do know. I do know. And, and I agree with you. I think, I think um, you know, I think we are definitely three gay men who have a lot of passion and, you know, they know their trade and, and they kind of want to make sure that it comes across in the most beautiful way. However, I do have to be honest, it's, it's um, the, the, the common denominator in, in our personalities and, of course, in this show as well, was that we all three really wanted to do good for the couples. And I think that was the underlining message of, of all of us. And really we stay in our lane, you know, I stay in my food and beverage and Jeremiah and his beauty when it comes to, you know, interior design. And of course, you know, Ty with these beautiful dresses, which mm -hmm. is just fantastic. And so, um, you know, we, when we came back together throughout the show, throughout the day or at night when we had dinner together, it was almost a, a, a moment for us to share what we learned from the couples when we spent one-on-one -on -one time with them and, um, you know, kind of process these stories. Because listen, I have a lot of people that tell us, 
I've been crying throughout the whole eight episodes. And I know <laughs> it's an emotional show. You can imagine if it's emotional for, for the viewers, it was emotional for us that we had to not only, you know, l listen and hear in these stories and uh, holding space for these couples, but also the pressure of making sure that this big day, their wedding day, not only was absolutely memorable, but it really did justice to their story. Let's talk about kind of, um, I guess, favorites. So, and I'll get to your personal story in just a second, because that was very moving, obviously. And I think that was episode one. So right out of the gate, was. You're, you're, was. you're exposing something that's pretty yeah. major. In terms of just the emotion, out of all the weddings, which one affected you the most where you were just sobbing like an Italian baby? <laughs> I never heard that, Tara. Like an Italian baby. <laughs> like a bambino. Um, or what's a what's baby in Italian? A bambino. I know, there listen. you go. Um, I have, oh God. Okay. You know, these, listen, there are two that come close, you know, cl close to my heart. One is Randy and Skyler, right? Uh, the same sex couple that, you know, mm -hmm. it's the, the gay guys there are towards the end. Uh, I believe it's episode, episode seven. Um, such a beautiful, uh, beautiful couple. And, you know, they not only had to go through, um, you know, being able to open up about who they, who they, who they were, who they are, and, and showing the love and, you know, uh, taking this oath and showing this union in front of friends and family, but also they really had to go through a journey of accepting themselves. And I think that is something that, you know, as a gay man, of course, we relate, uh, but we all have some sort of, you know, some parts of ourselves that we are not comfortable with, that we keep, you know, uh, deep down and we don't talk about it. So I think we all should do some sort of coming out story about who we really are, you know, because we, yeah. we all have that little secret. And I think that was, that was really beautiful. And, you know, they really stayed in our hearts. And then of course, Bruce and Essie, I think they are such a beautiful couple. Um, and that really showed me what um, true love without any sort of hangups, without any ifs and buts, without, you know, it, it just so pure and what it looks like, you know, and, and it, was, it was amazing. And I mean, uh, of course, you know, we go through the struggle of, of Essie and her dyslexia and, and so forth. And we see really this big, heavy baggage kind of releasing her shoulders, you know, and leave it when, when she hears that she's not quote unquote stupid, you know, because she has been bullied throughout all her life, but she just had one of the many common, you know, uh, um, you know, disorders that, that a lot of Americans actually have you know, all over the world. So she, she kind of felt that, you know, that baggage kind of lifts. So these are the two episodes that are really close to my heart. What was the hardest wedding to do where it was about them, so you couldn't really do food-wise what you really wanted to do because you had to respect their wishes and it was a little outside of the box? What was the most challenging for you? Because even though you made their day great, it wasn't a great representation of, of what you're able to do. I'm gonna, I'm gonna say this. I'm gonna say that when, I've been doing this for now since I was 13. You know, I've been cooking since I was very young and, and you know, with my companies, you know, we have been, you know, we have been creating menus for so many different events and, and individuals. There is always an element of me that I put into the menu. Um, and, and, you know, sometimes like even in this show, uh, you know, we get some couples that, that uh, I definitely at the beginning struggle to understand how to transform their story into food. Um, right. But I remind myself that this is not about me, it's about them. You know, you'll see in the, in the uh, first episode, you know, when I'm tasked to do uh, soul food, but in a healthy way, and I'm thinking in my head, <laughs> okay, soul food. I'm like, yeah. I am Italian from Florence. I'm like, let's talk about, you know, fried chicken. And, you know, I almost felt that I wasn't up to the task because God forbid, you know, I, I, that's, not, that's not what I grew up with, right? Um, but I think the trick there is, uh, it's always like that when we craft menus is really to incorporate the underlining of my philosophy, which is, you know, pristine ingredients and simple execution and being able to bring that into whatever cooking uh, style the, the, the clients or the couples uh, uh, are asking. And I think we came out with a really good menu. I mean, it was soul food in a healthier way. And, you know, the, the guests, of course, loved every, every bite of it. And, um, you know, it was, it was challenging, but very rewarding. Well, as I've, I've, I've been telling people, get out the tissues and get ready. Don't eat before the show because everything you make, you're hungry. 
you'll be sobbing, but you'll also be starving. So I say, just it's get ready. To, <laughs> you know, let's talk about your personal story. I, you know, this, this, not that it came out of nowhere, but did you think in the entire shooting of the episodes that eventually that might have come out, or were you surprised how it came out, and and what did it feel like to be so vulnerable on national television, no less? International, and <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> right. Um, it was not planned. It was yeah. a moment that was very, uh, like, by the way, the whole show, it's, it's exactly what you see. Uh, it, was, it was a moment that, um, that required me to open up. And the reason is that Marcus sat down in front of me in the kitchen and opened up about something very, very close to his heart and a struggle that he went through with, of course, figuring it out that he's type 1 diabetes and how he had to adjust his life and lifestyle to this new, uh, you know, truth and right. reality. And it was a very vulnerable moment for this man. You know, you have in front of, in front of me, I had a beautiful, tall, big black man from the South. And I'm thinking, what do I have in common with you? I'm cooking scallops with fennel salads and a little, you know, <laughs> uh, blood orange vinaigrette. And I'm thinking, what, what do we have here? How do I connect with you? And then all of a sudden, as I'm thinking that as we're filming, he opens up about his status, right? Type 1 diabetes. And that moment required me to answer back in the same way he talked to me, which was in a very vulnerable way. And the only way that I could have done that and I could do that is by revealing to him that we have more in common than what he thinks. And that my struggle as an HIV positive man, when I discovered that, it's extremely similar to his struggle when he discovered that he had type 1 diabetes. You know, the same fears, um, same disappointments, same... Uh, you know, fa feeling of failure, you know, feeling shame, figure it out how my life is going to change. Am I going to be loved? Am I be able to be, to be loving? Like all of these questions that I'm sure, you know, popped up in Marcus' heads, also I experienced, you know, it might be a different diagnosis, but it's the same exact um, feeling. And so that came very natural. And, and I know it was a big step, but I think it was a necessary step, especially nowadays, um, you know, we, we have 30, 40 years of medical advances and now likely we can live with HIV. You know, it's, it's really something, you know, likely if you treat it, you're not going to die from it. You're just going to, you know, carry it with you and, and it stays with you. You can be HIV undetectable. Uh, you know, we have PrEP, which it's a beautiful way to not, uh, you know, uh, uh, to, to uh, get the disease. And, and so there are so many different medical advances done in the HIV and AIDS fight. However, I do think that the stigma really stayed and, and got stuck in the 80s and 90s. And so when you think about an HIV positive person or HIV undetectable, you still have the image of somebody, you know, dying in a bed, you know, from the 1990s, you know, during the awful uh, uh, epidemic. And I think, uh, I think that needs to be moved. That needle needs yeah. to go forward, you know, and you can only do that by having people opening up about their stories, you know. Yep. I get all the time people telling me, I would have never expected you to be HIV positive. And I say, well, why is that? You know, and, and the reason is because they have this image in their, in their mind of what an HIV positive person looks like. What was that day like after that came out? Because here you, you've got people shooting the scene and then all of a sudden that comes out and then your co-hosts find out about it. What was that day like for you once that was revealed on the show? Uh, I felt like <clears throat> 100 tons break left my body you know it felt right and and i want to say something it was very scary you know because sometimes i i you know i'm getting messages of of a lot of viewers you know from all over the world telling me oh i wish i was as courageous as you were or i wish i had you know i didn't have the fear of coming out i i did have fear i was fearful life requires you when you when you get to the point of feeling the fear of saying well i'm not sure it requires you to you know, to take a little push and a little trust, a little step of trust. And that's exactly what I did. You know, my, my favorite, my favorite uh, researcher, Brene Brown, who, you know, all of us kind of know, she talks about how life happens in the arena, you know? <clears throat> so you, you have to kind of step into the arena and that's where life happens. And so what happened to me, you know, years ago with, of course, testing HIV positive, would I choose it again? No, but it was also a big blessing. It was an, uh, opening my eyes into a new way of living life, more pure, more connected, you know, more empathetic. And that's really what um, I think 
you know, we, we have to do. We have to open up about our stories. And, and yes, it's fearful at times. Um, and I did felt that fear, absolutely. So this is gonna air this weekend on Good Morning Arizona, and we're doing two parts to this. The second part that I'm gonna tease is just kind of Chef Gabe's wedding tips as we navigate this time of crisis and also look ahead. Absolutely. Uh, so, so first of all, give a shout out to your folks in, or your friends in Arizona. How, how often do you get <laughs> back to Arizona? And do you miss Good Morning Arizona? Well, I, listen, Arizona is in my heart. You know, they, uh, oh, there you go, sorry. <laughs> I have a doggy down and she's like pushing, she's pushing oh. the camera back and forth. Right. You see me LA in one of the shows. Yeah. Um, Arizona is the state that adopted me, you know, coming from Italy and they open their arms and they say, sure, come here. We need a little bit of Italian passion and craziness <laughs> in our lives. And so, um, you know, I, we have amazing clients, amazing friends. I mean, Tara, I know you are, you know, you are now, uh, you know, somewhere else, but when you come back for winter, then, um, you know, I would love to, of course, see you. I have a lot of connection there. Um, so I'll be, I'll be there very soon, yeah. Can you disclose, are you seeing anybody, and has this show made you think about what your future wedding might look like? How much can you say? <laughs> <laughs> I've been thinking about my future wedding since I was 20. It's like, you know, it's like, for me, it's, it's, a, it's a beautiful time. Um, I know what my wedding will look like. I, it, will, it will be in Tuscany, of course, in Firenze, as you know, we have spent, you and I spend a lot of time there together. Um, it's gonna be in the beautiful hills, you know, in the countryside of Chianti, beautiful long table, you know, maybe 50, 60 people, very small and not big. Uh, of course, my dogs will need to be there, but you know, it's gonna be a very farm to table uh, affair and connected to my story which I think it's important for any wedding. Again, you know, you watch this show, you watch Say I Do. All the episodes and all the weddings are really an expression of the story of the bride and the groom or the grooms. And that's important, you know. So my story begins in Tuscany and it will continue in Tuscany. So that will just be it, yep. Well, I'm just going to consider that an invitation. So whenever it happens, I'll be there, whether I'm, whether I'm invited or not. I'll be, I'll be like you guys hiding in the bushes during the proposal day when you have to come out and surprise everybody later. Um, so what are I, your... You don't need to hide. Yeah, well, I'll be right there front and center. Um, your tips. Give me, give me three tips for people who are planning a wedding maybe now. A lot of weddings have been postponed and delayed and people don't know, should they just get married and have a party yes. later? Do you have a couple, maybe three suggestions if you can kind of narrow those of down? Of course. Well, uh, it's, it's not an easy time. You know, I, I personally had to, you know, we were planning 12 weddings this year and we had to postpone all of them. And some are just postponed, they to be decided, but some really had to be reinvented. And so I say tips number one, be flexible, be okay with the fact that, you know, things might not end up being exactly like you, you, you plan to. And again, that's what life is. And so everything happens for a reason. I believe that either you need a little bit more time. So you, maybe you have an extra six or seven or eight months to plan your wedding. And I think that's, that's a blessing, right? There is never enough time to plan your big day. So take it as is and just be like, okay, we're just going to spend another eight months, you know, to plan this, uh, this wedding. Um, Tip number two is to be authentic, to go back to what you plan and, and you were expecting and kind of see, is there really an, a, a, a reflection of who we are? And if we need to make changes, then what those changes are. Oftentimes they are about reducing the number of guests. You know, maybe this is the time where, you know, instead of having 200 people, 250 people at the wedding, you go back to 50, 60, the people that really matter in your life. Also, it's a great way to, you know, uh, not, invite the people that you have to invite you know those crazy <laughs> those crazy friends or parents you know you'll be like sorry i can't yeah i don't have space <laughs> yep. which is I fine totally agree. um the tip number three is going to be um uh, you know you're in love this is a love story and this is just part of it embrace it you know it's a new normal and you know don't be ashamed of it don't try to go back into what it was normal before this we are all entering a new normal and we are all testing what works and what doesn't you know um and, and i think we have to be okay with that you know stay in love uh make sure that whatever you're planning shows the the story that you to have and if you have to make adjustment and have something a little bit more intimate then let be it because we are all going back to something that it's more uh you know it's closer to our hearts it's more simple it's less perfect and it's okay to be imperfect it's okay to have something that you know, maybe it's not what we expected to have. And you'll find the beautiful perfection in that imperfection. So embrace it, you know, enjoy it. 
and, uh, and, and just, you know, really uh, ground yourself in the love that you two have um, and show it, show the world. Yeah. I wish I knew you when I got married because we got married in Telluride on a mountain with 30 people. Oh, but to your point, like, I don't want anybody, you know, 30 people, <laughs> she's not invited. She can come to the party later. I was, I'm like, they're not coming. See? I don't know them. <laughs> <laughs> they're not going to be there. I have not shared a meal with them. I have no idea. So. They can come to the party. Now, I have not met Ty or Jeremiah, but tell me okay. that, that my friend Manny isn't the Filipino version of Ty. Can you okay, see put this? it the other way because I have my. my oh my! <laughs> oh wait, here. I'm Tell me this you. is not. Ty. Oh my God! He, I think we should. I think we should connect them somehow. He's a TV guy at a Palm Springs, so I'm sure you guys will all meet. He's hilarious. He's so so funny. Yeah, and that next. suit, the red suit, it's fantastic. Have you seen the amazing suits that Ty oh. creates? I mean, not for only, himself. You know, it's yep. absolutely unbelievable. I think we should connect them. I will, I, absolutely, and I, and I do want to say, I mean, everybody, again, you guys are so talented, but Ty in particular, some of the cool things that he's done with the dresses, the painting, that, the, that the, uh, oh my gosh, I can go, that's just stunning, and the way he weaves personal things into the dresses is really yes. beyond special. So last quick thing, and this is really just a story about you, because I'm going to post this on YouTube, so say hi to my, the, the people who subscribe to my YouTube channel. Yes, Hello, yes. beautiful YouTubers. <laughs> I think I'm too old to be on YouTube, but hey, welcome. Yeah. Well, I? it's a work in progress. It's a work in progress. <laughs> it's a work in progress. <laughs> Although my Hamilton interviews kind of kicked ass, but, but whatever. I've not watched it. I need to watch it, by the way. 330 plus thousand views, Chef Gabe. What? On my Hamilton interviews. However, my latest interview has about 180. So I, I'm, again, well, baby okay. It balances out. It's fine. It balances it's fine. <laughs> uh, but here's a story. This is my favorite Chef Gabe story, and I want okay. people um, who are watching to know this about you. This, this to me summarizes you, and this will explain to fans of yours who are just now getting to know you why you are so special to so many people. So we were in Italy, in Florence, several years ago for the movie Junket for Inferno. And thank God for Facebook, because I'm not on there as much as I should be. Through Facebook, I found out you too were in Italy, and you were coming from Tuscany, and it just so happened that we were going to be in Florence on the same night, so we were able to meet up. It was a beautiful day to me, actually. Yeah. It was rainy in Florence, but it was perfect in Siena. So, looking forward to actually spending the night with you. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. Hello. You proceed to set up. A, a few of our TV pals were heading down to Rome, and we were driving through Tuscany, and I'd already booked a place to stay. But you said, oh, you got to go to the Rosewood Castiglian de Bosco, or whatever it was called. It's a stunning place. That's it. Kat Katerina, my friend, she's going to set you up. You got a wine tour and blah, blah. I mean, this was less than 12 hours we were leaving. I know you can't. She'll probably offer, you know, a place for you to stay. And I go, well, we already booked a place. Make a long story short, Katerina not only treats us to lunch for four people, we have a full tour of the grounds. She offers a place for us to stay that's probably $1,000 a night that sadly I couldn't take her up on because we had already booked a place. We have a whole wine tour. It was the most elaborate, fantastic afternoon. I'm sitting with Katerina and I said, how long have you known Chef Gabe? Isn't he the best? And I'm expecting her to say you guys were childhood friends from your days in Italy, right? <laughs> she goes, I just met him Tuesday. I go, wait, what? <laughs> you, you only known him for like four days? I go, he set this whole thing up. I, I assumed you guys had been friends for years. She goes, I just fun. met him this week. And I thought, that's the guy. I mean, think about that, really. This place is a high-end place. She's entertaining four people she doesn't know, thanks to a person she just met. And that's the impact you have on people. And I want your oh, new fans God. and old fans to know. I just didn't. But listen, we, you know, with Katharina and I, we might have met that Tuesday, but we had a lot of food together. And that's yes. the power of food. It brings people <laughs> there you go. together. It makes you feel like, you know, you're old pals. And that was exactly it. I mean, that's what happened. And I'm so happy that you guys had a good time. In fact, I have to tell you, I'm dreaming of the Castillo del Bosco right now. Oh. I, I really would love to be there at this moment. <laughs> that, could, that could be a wedding venue. I'm just saying. Oh, my God. It's so beautiful. Listen, so beautiful. I can't thank you enough. I'm so excited for you. I can't wait for a season two. Keep me posted if you can, if I, that's I been know. approved yet. Um, and I know that's a process. We, we do not know but... yet. We don't know yet. Okay. Yeah, it, 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 it happens a while. But listen, I, I really hope so. I mean, the, the response has been amazing. And, and um, 
and it's a show, it's a good show. You know what I mean? It's, it's a show about love, about stories, about vulnerability. We all need that nowadays. And I totally think, um, I mean, why not? I want to I wanna, I wanna be able to story tell another, you know, A stories or, you know, yeah. or, or A weddings. I, I, think, I think everybody will, you know, needs that in their lives. Hey, Gabe, congratulations. I was thrilled to see your dogs Thank make you. a cameo. So excited for you. Thank you, Tara. Ciao, Stay ciao, safe. ciao, ciao. Ciao, ciao. You too.